Hello, in this course we have MindTap as the application you would use for your textbook and your homework. Although Blackboard is the interface by which you can get to MindTap. Your Blackboard login credentials will actually allow you to get to MindTap if Blackboard is down. Um, so you could just Google MindTap login and um, continue with your Blackboard credentials. But the first time you use MindTap, you'd have to register through the course in Blackboard. So you would click here. I'm not a student, so I can't show you the registration process, but it's very straightforward. Um, you do not need to give them your student ID. I do recommend that you give them your cell number. Um, that's up to you. So when you click on the Chemistry 151, um, you see what happened. Um, you don't see the second window until you go down to your, um, your bar down at the bottom. You can see the second window opened up. So this is a pop-up window, which means you'll have to go into your um, Chrome or um, Firefox to disable the pop-up blocker. Um, unfortunately, this might be an issue for campus computers. I'm not sure if you're able to do that, um, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, when your um, this window comes up, this is the interface that you would see. This bar on the right is where you'll find your textbook. So this is the full book. Um, the full book can be printed. Um, I will go ahead and have those in PDF so it makes it easier for you to print. I am expecting that you do print the chapters and bring them to class because there are times where we would not have technology and you might want to access um, the textbook or there might be an open book uh, quiz that I don't announce. I might say, hey, Bring your books with you all the time and if I have an open book quiz then at least you'll have it with you okay so that's to encourage you to have a paper copy of the book okay so when I click on the book it appears in the right panel um, and then you can make that bigger of course which you'd want to do um, the chapters are nav you can navigate through the chapters um, by clicking there um, Everything that's in the homework um, that has a section associated with it is directly from the book. So the difference between the book and the homework uh, modules that have the same section is just simply um, the activities are active. So in this flat version of the book, here's an interactive figure, but you can't click on it or do anything with it. Um, that's in the homework section. But you can annotate, um, so you can um, make notes, um, create a notebook, highlight, and so forth. Okay, I'm closing that out, and I lost my book, so I'll bring my book back. All right, so you need to just get used to navigating through these windows. Um, so when I, again, make this bigger, I don't see the rest of the things in my interface, so then I would close it out. I would return to the you know, the home page or whatever you see when you log in. There's a study center where you can create your own quizzes. There are flashcards, which are very useful um, to learn the content. Um, that's actually really important because a lot of times students jump right to the problems and don't read the text or the content and then miss a lot of multiple choice questions. All your reference materials are here. That's the periodic table or any um, constants that you might need to answer a question. Um, so you can enlarge that, whatever, you can print it. There are other tables, um, other um, resources associated with your textbook here. But most importantly are uh, tables of numbers that you might need to solve problems in your homework. They assume you have access to that, so make sure you know it's there. Okay, so those are the um, important parts um, on this right hand. Um, menu. Um, the view is in list view. You can go to uh, week view. That's usually easier for students. Um, and then you can see the activities. This is week one. Um, if you note this is counts towards grade, there will be some that will be practice and some that would count towards your grade. This is the introductory setup. 
Um, so this would be completed right away so that you know how to navigate around um, in MindTap. This is the math review that um, we're going to work on uh, prior to recitation. Um, a lot of the homework uh, is the due date is different than the actual schedule. And there are reasons for that that I discuss in the video on the class schedule. So you should have watched that video first. Okay, but needless to say, um, you go by the class schedule in order to complete the homework on time. Um, if you want to complete the homework after um, it's due, that is possible up until the exam for which that homework is pertinent. Okay, so I will make all the homework extended. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is because you can't practice if it's past the due date. Um, so if it's past the due date, for example, this section 1.1 is due August uh, 19th. Currently, your exam is September 10th. So I want you to complete it on August the 19th. Um, however, um, the exam, I would want you to practice. So I would have to make it due later so that you can practice. So that's going to happen on a regular basis. Essentially, you have multiple deadlines, and every time you miss a deadline, you lose points. Um, but then you could still complete it right before the exam just to encourage you to go back and practice. Hopefully you understand what I just said. If not, I'll explain it again in class. Okay, um, so um, the introductory uh, portion I'm sorry, I said this was due August 19th, but it's due the 27th. <clears throat> That's when you're supposed to be able to see it, um, which is the first day of classes. I'll probably try to make that date go up. Anyhow, um, though your week view is probably the most useful, I do want to point out that if I happen to not assign a section, that does not mean that you should not read that section, if you understand what I'm saying. For example, if I like the content in, um, and it's in your schedule for a particular section, I'll just go to one random section. Actually, thermochemistry is a good example. That's not till near the end of the semester. But thermochemistry, I am not covering some sections of the book and some of the questions I just find too difficult for you. Um, so let's go to principles of thermodynamics. Okay, so this is probably a good one. Um, so I actually like this interactive figure, but I don't like this question. So what do I do as a faculty member? If I sign it, you have to do both. And then you might get frustrated because you, you know, you don't get the second question right, but you do get the first question right. Well, I might not assign it, but then I would recommend that you do the interactive figure um, so it would be suggested. Um, but you would still have to do the reading. Okay, so this is some of the issues I have with the application. Is some of the questions I find too difficult, but I can't exclude them because you won't do them. And then if I do exclude them, um, you know, or I mean, if I do include them, you find them too difficult. Um, and then you get frustrated. So what I will say is always go by your schedule. If I cover a section, even if there aren't problems in that section, that section would be required reading. Hopefully that is clear. Okay, so we talked about the schedule in a separate video. So there's not a lot to understand here. I would recommend that you use Chrome as a browser. Um, if Chrome is not working for some reason, you can try Firefox. Remember, you do have to have pop-ups disabled. Um, you have to keep up with the homework. It's not going to work for you if you don't. Um, and as I said, the homework would be extended on a regular basis to just prior to the exam for which the homework is due. So chapters one and two are in exam one, and they would the final very last due date is always going to be right before the exam. So I'll be changing the due dates on a regular basis. So it'd be frustrating to you if you say, hey, I don't have to do it until the day before the exam. That is not true. Just remember, follow the course schedule 
for your due dates, but then continue to work on the homework if it's available to you. Uh, hopefully that's clear. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy um, this interface. Um, we'll try to avoid frustration. And if you do feel frustrated, you do need to speak up and let me know uh, so that I can um, address that frustration for you and the rest of the class as best I can within the context of the application. Keep in mind the application is to help you learn. It's not something you're just going to get over with and finish. Um, there are easy ways to do the problems. You just get them wrong and then you get the hints. Um, that is the worst way to approach this. You always want to try the problems without any hints first after you've done the reading. You don't want to go to the problem first and then do the reading. It's mostly not going to you know, work out for you. And half the time that takes twice as much time as just reading in the first place and attempting the problem. These are bad habits that you need to get out of. Okay, so that's enough for this recording. Um, please watch all the remaining uh, introductory recordings.